Hey, y'all. There's big developments in the shop shed build this week. Come on, let's go check it out. After taking the time to cover up all of the switch boxes, electrical outlets, and light boxes, which I didn't get any footage of, I took the time to go around and put in these nail plates that covers up any area where the electrical wire goes through the studs and helps prevent someone from driving a nail or screw into that wire to include the ceiling. Then I made a small enclosure out of half-inch styrofoam insulation and sealing tape in an attempt to keep the spray foam from seeping down into the electrical box. Now it worked out well. I used sealing tape and wedged some 2x4s down into the bottom recess to attempt to keep the expanding foam from leaking into the electrical panel. I, mean, I like my electrician and I want him to continue to like me. So by keeping the foam out of the panel, I think we'll have a good long friendship. Then once that was completed, I sacrificed a couple of tall kitchen trash bags to cover up the panel and keep any overspray off of and out of the panel. Then my new hero, Abraham, from Gale Construction Services, showed up and started spraying the spray foam. I chose three inches of closed cell spray foam, which Abraham sprayed in a matter of a few hours. Then he went back and cleaned the spray foam off of the studs and rafters, leaving just the foam inside the stud bays and rafter bays. I didn't have the right breathing apparatus, so I was not able to go inside to get good footage. And I apologize for the lens flare in this shot, but I was restricted to shooting footage from outside through the doorway. But here is a good shot of Abraham spraying the inside of the door. He used a graduated probe to make sure he applied three inches of spray foam within the stud bays, in the walls, the rafters, and the doors. After Abraham was finished, we allowed the foam to off-gas for 48 hours, then it was my job to go around and uncover all of the electrical outlets, light boxes, and switch boxes. Then I used an old chisel to kind of fine-tune the cleaning job Abraham had done and get any foam off of the rafters and studs that would prevent me from putting the sheathing up nice and flat against the rafters and studs. I also used this wicked looking apparatus, which believe it or not, is used for grooming horses. This is called a spring curry comb. And what I would do is take my two foot level and run it down across a pair of studs or rafters and anywhere that level touched foam I would use that curry comb to rake back the foam get it out of the way so that my wall sheathing and ceiling sheathing 
will go up nice and flat against the studs and the rafters. A little bit more of this cleaning up and I will be ready to start sheathing the ceiling and the walls. So that's where we sit. You're now up to date on the progress of the shop shed build as of June 15th, 2021. Now I'd like to thank a few people right here. Number one is Martin at I Build Sheds in Tacoma, Washington for making this shop shed a reality today. Number two, I would like to thank Tricia and Abraham at Gale Construction for the installation of the spray foam. They really did a great job here. Hashtag not sponsors. Now you will find links to both I Build Sheds and Gale Construction down in the description box of this video. But do know they have limited service areas. Check their websites for more details. I would also like to give a special shout out to all of you. Without all of you, none of this would have been possible. Every time you watch a video, every time you share a video, every time you recommend one of my videos, you help me. And without that support, this just wouldn't be possible. I'd also like to give a special shout out to everybody who has clicked one of those donation links down in the description and donated some dollars to this shop shed project. And to everybody who has given a super chat in the live Q and A's and everybody who has used the super stickers, you guys are the absolute best. This community has shown me more love than I think I will ever be able to repay. And I want you to know that I sincerely, sincerely thank you from the bottom of my heart. So what's next for the shop shed? Well, next is going to be sheathing. And I think you're going to find my choice of sheathing to be pretty interesting. But that's for the next video. Now, I know the number one question I'm going to get right off the bat is, why spray foam insulation? Well, it comes down to geography. We live in Southern Oregon. It is wet here, and not just rain. We get a lot of rain, but we also have days at a time where we have dense fog. And I'm talking down to zero visibility. And that can last for a couple of weeks at a time. And in a wet environment like this here, wood rots. It, that's just a fact of life. So you have to do everything you can to prevent that rot. Now, I could have gone with a traditional bat insulation, be it rock wool, fiberglass, or something else, and then come back with a vapor barrier and sealing tape and caulk to try to mitigate that but you're still going to have that area where cold air meets hot air, whether it be inside or outside, and you have to provide ventilation to get rid of that stale air. With spray foam insulation, specifically the closed cell spray foam that we went with on the shop shed, I don't need to do any of that. The spray foam is the vapor barrier. The minute that liquid foam hit that siding and the two by four framing in this shed, it sealed it. It also provided that thermal break. The spray foam is the vapor barrier. It is the insulation. It is that thermal break that keeps hot air away from cold air, whether it's on the inside or the outside, either way. I can now install a heater and an air conditioner in here and I don't have to provide any further ventilation. The ceiling I get with this closed cell spray foam now makes this entire building 100% waterproof, bug proof, dust proof, 
and moisture proof. Nothing can penetrate except through the doors, which I now have open for light. <laughs> so it was a 100% seal, and I don't have to provide any other ventilation. And that's big when it comes to a small shop like this, where space is at a premium. I can just put my sheathing up against the rafters and against the studs without having to worry about ventilation and moving air through these areas. It's 100% sealed. Now, that does come at a cost, but when you consider this is a one-time thing, one and done, we're finished. And it's virtually maintenance free once I get the sheathing put up. I think the trade offs are well worth it. I won't have to get in and caulk or paint or do anything else to this once I have this sheathing up. So, for my environment, for my application, spray foam made a lot of sense. Now, I know there's going to be a lot more questions because I couldn't cover everything in this video. So today at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, I'll be hosting a live Q&A session right here on my YouTube channel where we can discuss the shop shed, Vectric software, or anything else you'd like to talk about. Again, that's today at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, right here on my YouTube channel. And I've put a link to that live Q&A session down in the description box of this video. Now these live Q&A sessions are a great reason to go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. And when you click that red subscribe button, click that little bell right next to it. Then click it a second time and set that menu to all notifications. Then you'll get a notification the next time I post a video and the next time I go live. So I hope to see you this afternoon. And as always, whether you subscribe to my channel or not, I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time to watch. And y'all take care.